Okay, this is derivatives part three, the final video I have over derivatives, and it is over one and one rule only, the chain rule. The chain rule is probably one of the most important rules when it comes to derivatives. It is used in many, many, many functions, and if you use it properly and truly understand it, it will make your lives so much easier. So, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Here is the chain rule. Okay, now I'm going to write it two different ways. The first is writing it like this. All right, if you have a function, let's just say h of x, right? And that function is a function within a function, right? So you have a function g of x that is within a function a, uh, f of x. Now, again, I know this is going to look a little bit confusing, but trust me, once we start doing examples, it's going to become so simple for you. All right, so define a derivative when you have a function within a function. The first thing you do is you take the derivative of the overall function f of x and you plug g of x into that derivative. And then you multiply by the derivative of g of x. Okay, now bear with me. I know you might be like, huh? What? How is that the chain rule? Well, it is. It's confusing, I know. But it's again, this is used for when you have functions within functions. So you take the derivative of the overall function, f of x, plug g of x into that, and then you multiply the derivative of g. Now, a what I think a much easier way of writing this is this. If you have a function, okay, let's say this is u to the n, right, where u is not necessarily just x. So like, we're used to doing the power rule, right? The power rule is x to the n. That's easy. Well, this is, uh, let's say that that x is not something so simple, right? It's just, well, u, right? So the derivative would be n times u to the n minus 1 times the derivative of u. Now, again, I know that this seems confusing, but it's going to be really, really simple. You do have to kind of memorize these rules, but I'm going to be honest. Once you start working with this rule a lot, you're going to realize how simple it is. Trust me on that. All right, so let's get to work with actually utilizing this rule. So first, right, here's the first example. I actually want you to understand how something like this, 2x to the third, actually does use the chain rule. So what we do here, right, is we take 3 down to the 2, and that makes 6, x to the second. And then we times that by the derivative of this inside, right? So again, that's like using the rule I did up here, right? u to the n. n falls down in front, u to the n minus 1 times the derivative of u, times the derivative of the base. All right, so the derivative of x is just 1, which is why we didn't teach it to you that way, because 6x squared times 1 is just 6x squared. So we taught that as the power rule. Now, watch if I do something like this. Get ready for this. Okay, if I have something a little bit more complicated, like x plus 5 to the third. Okay, so now my u is not just x, it's a quantity. It's x plus 5. Watch how I do this, right? This actually becomes pretty cool. To find the derivative, oh, by the way, I should have labeled this as the derivative over here, sorry. To find the derivative, that 3 falls down in front, so I have 3x plus 5 to the second, so that's just kind of using our power rule, right? 3 falls down in front, the x plus 5 to the second, but then I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So what's the derivative of x plus 5? Well, just 1. That's it. Right, so there's your derivative. My derivative is 3 times x plus 5 squared. Very, very simple, right? I know it's a complicated rule, but it's actually not too bad. Let's kind of up it a little bit. Let's make it a little bit more kind of complicated so I could show this to you. All right, um, let's use h of x. I just like to use different letters for fun. Okay, so we have 4x squared plus 5x all raised to the fifth. Okay, now what we're trying to do is we're trying to think of this as a function within a function, right? So we have 4x squared plus 5. That is a function within another function, right? We have um, u to the fifth. Kind of think of it like that, right? So we have a value u raised to the fifth, and that value u is itself a function, 4x squared plus 5x to the fifth. But as confusing as all that is, it's actually really, really simple. So all I got to do is bring down that 5, and then I leave the inside alone. Because remember, you leave that original function alone inside, but you apply the power rule, right? 5 falls down in front, 4x squared plus 5x raised to the 5 minus 1, which is 4. But then what you have to remember is you need to multiply this by the derivative of that inside function, which would be 8x plus 
5. So there's your answer. 5 times 4x squared plus 5x to the 4th times 8x plus 5. There's your derivative. Now, it's pretty complicated. I certainly don't want to multiply all that out. I'd probably actually just leave it like that, which is totally fine. But that's how it works. So it's when you have a function within a function. All you got to do is follow that rule. All right, let's do several more examples here so you could see here. I'm going to try to make this as easy as I can. So g of x equals, let's see here, 2x plus 4 to the third. So watch how, I mean, come on, guys, you're going to love, love this rule. It's so simple. 3 falls down in front, and then we have 2x plus 4 squared. Just use the power rule. Multiply by, don't forget to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 2. So I can do 2 times 3 and get 6, times 2x plus 4 to the second. Easy, 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 done, done, done. How simple is that? All right, let's do another one right now. Think about square root functions, right? We've all hated square root functions for a while now. They're kind of complicated. So the square root of 3x squared plus 5x. Remember how much work involved? You had to multiply by the conjugate. I mean, using limits with square roots is a lot of work. But if I use my new rule, watch how easy this can be. Now, the first thing is I don't like square roots. So I'm going to write this as 3x squared plus 5x to the 1 half. Now, get ready for this. This is going to work out so nice. You just have to be careful with the algebra. All right. Square root is the same as a one-half power. One-half power drops down in front, so I have one-half times 3x squared plus 5x. Now, what's one-half minus one? Negative one-half, so that's my new power. But don't forget, you have to multiply this all by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside would be 6x plus 5. So there's your answer. But as you heard me say in other videos, don't ever leave a negative exponent. So here we go. Ready? On top, I have a 1, and then I have a 6x plus 5. So my numerator is going to be 6x plus 5. In the denominator, I have that 2. Well, let me put that in parentheses, 6x plus 5. I have that 2, but now next to that 2 is going to be a 3x squared plus 5x raised to the positive 1 half. Because this guy right here, let me kind of highlight it. This guy right here, because he had a negative exponent, he moves the denominator as a positive exponent. Okay? So now on top, I just have 6x plus 5. You don't necessarily need those parentheses. On the bottom, I have 2. But remember, a 1 half power is the same as a square root of 3x squared plus 5. 5x. There's your final answer. Now think how long it would take us to do that using limits. But look how fast it uses, to, and we could solve that problem if we use the chain rule. So take a look at that, and hopefully that's not too bad. Right? How about this one? Remember fractional problems? We hated those too. 1 over x plus 2, right? Like that, you had to plug in the x plus h, you had to use the limits, and things got kind of complicated. Watch this. Watch this. Ready? x plus 2 to the negative 1. All I did was I write this, I wrote this as x plus 2 to the negative 1. It's the same thing, I just use a negative exponent. Now I can use the chain rule to find the derivative. Okay, and that's kind of ugly. Let me fix that up. So the derivative would be f prime of x, the negative 1 falls down in front, x plus 2. Negative 1 minus 1 would be a negative 2 times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of x plus 2 is just 1. Now clean all this up. Negative 1 times 1 on top is just negative 1. And then my denominator is going to be x plus 2 squared because this negative exponent moves to the bottom as a positive exponent. Look how simple that is. There's my derivative. Look how easy that was. All I did was I followed the chain rule. I'm going to slide that over. Let's do another example here. All right, let's see here. How about a more complicated one? These are definitely more complicated. We hated these. Let's see here. 3x plus 2 over x minus 5, right? Remember when we did these problems? Now, I'm looking at this, and I would probably go ahead and use the, pro uh, the quotient rule here, right? Let's, uh, this is just kind of a recap, right, to use the quotient rule. Take the bottom, x minus 5, times the derivative of the top, 3, minus the top, 3x plus 2, times the derivative of the bottom, 1, all divided by the denominator squared. So this is definitely one where I'd want to use the quotient rule. Clean this up. On top, I get 3x minus 15, minus 3x minus 2. All I did there was kind of use the... Um, 
the distribution, right? Come on, point by one's pretty easy. All divided by x minus 5 up, and I forgot something, x minus 5 squared. I forgot the little square right there. And let's see here, 3x and negative 3x cancels. Negative 15 minus 2 is negative 17. So I get negative 17 over x minus 5 squared as my derivative. I mean, how easy is that? I mean, come on, this stuff is so simple when you're using our new rules. All right, let's do another one that would definitely be ugly, but it's going to be very nice and simple by hand right now. All right, so let's see here. 2 over the square root of x minus 4. Okay, now up until now, we would have been like, oh, i got to use the limits, and this is going to be ugly. Watch how I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to rewrite this as 2 times x minus 4 to the negative 1 half. So a square root is a 1 half power, but it was in the denominator, so I brought it to the numerator as a negative 1 half exponent. Now I can incorporate my chain rule. Negative 1 half falls down in front, so I get 2 times negative 1 half times x minus 4 to the negative 3 halves, because negative 1 half minus 1, right? Negative 1 half minus 1 is negative 3 halves. That's my new um, power times, don't forget to multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of x minus 4 is just 1. So the good news is that doesn't affect us too much. So let's see here. 2 times negative 1 half is negative 1. Oh, but wait a minute. The x minus 4 is going to move to the bottom as a positive 3 halves exponent. And there is your final derivative. I mean, come on. So simple. So hopefully the new um, chain rule makes your life pretty easy. It's like I said, it's like a really simple rule. It's basically the power rule. All you have to do is remember that you have this inside function that you need to multiply by its derivative. So it makes these kind of complicated functions really, really, really easy to work with. All you got to do is follow the power rule and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside function. All right, that's it for the chain rule. We'll do a lot of examples in class.